What's good, Josh? Bull Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out the awesome 2020 Royal Rumble match by Super Kick Studios. Been a minute since we checked out one of his videos, man. This was a uh, it was it was it was a great Royal Rumble. This I believe was the Royal Rumble where uh, Edge returned. I also believe this Royal Rumble was in Houston, Texas at uh, Minute Maid uh, Minute Maid Park. Uh, I want to say. That's where this Royal Rumble was taking place at. It was a lot of people there, um, and uh, it was it, it was a good one. It was definitely a good one. Unfortunately, that was the last pay per view with uh, with people there actually with a live crowd because after that, that's when COVID kind of took over the world. So um, it was the last time we had people in attendance. But this was a great one. I believe Drew McIntyre won this one as well to a, a, a awesome awesome pop awesome ovation so uh yeah man um this was this was something that um a lot of fans really did appreciate because we really were able to you know get a great you know some great surprises you know seeing edge come back out there was awesome and fantastic and having drew mcintyre not only eliminate brock lesnar but win the damn thing that was pretty cool i wish Still to this day, that Drew could have been the one to get his moment at uh, the Royal Rumble that year. Uh, well, not the Royal Rumble, the WrestleMania that year, that year, because he he defeated Brock Lesnar in front of an empty uh, arena, man, or well, empty uh, performance center. So, but we're gonna check this out. Appreciate all the love and support, man. Let's go down memory lane. Every year in January, the road to WrestleMania begins at the Royal Rumble. 30 entrants, one winner, and you just never know who it'll be once the clock hits zero. This match concept every year is such a ride. The unpredictability, the thrill, the shock that at any moment, anyone can come through that curtain and enter the match. And isn't it crazy that the concept is so simple? Mm -hmm. 30 men, 30 women, over the top, and you're eliminated at last one standing wins. The Rumble is a concept that everyone loves. Wrestling fan or not, even a bad Rumble is still somehow an enjoyable one breakout performances with people going the distance yeah. legendary returns, little guys big guys new guys old guys but they say that things are always better when there's a story when the fans have something to sink their teeth into and something that rewards them for watching year round it makes things just a little bit better than your standard 30 guys coming out and just dumping each other over the top rope mm -hmm. and that's exactly how the 2020 royal rumble was i hate to dampen the mood right off the bat but january 26 2020 was a horrible horrible day for the sporting world mm -hmm. we lost a legend kobe bryant alongside his daughter and the others who were in that helicopter there's just no words to explain Where's how i piece, personally kobe felt still. when i took out my phone and i saw that reported this was just a tipping point to what was without a doubt a tough and horrible year there's not Cracks. much positive that came out of 2020 mm -hmm. but there was the men's royal rumble match live from minute maid park in houston texas yep. and in my opinion this is a top three royal rumble of all time yep i i i knew for a fact i i I, I knew for a fact it was it had to be a uh, Mini Maid Park man. Uh, this was just the the crowd there was so electric, and we didn't know that was going to be the very last time that we would see a crowd, a live audience, pretty much for the rest of the year, man, because of COVID, man. So uh, for those who are subscribed to me, man, shout out to uh, us Houstonians for definitely showing out and you know having a good time for that year's royal rumble i'm from the story to the callbacks the pacing the atmosphere and so much more and the legend himself started it off at number one the holder of the most prestigious title in the entire company brock lesnar no wwe champion had ever declared that they were entering the rumble at one and he was doing it for the simple fact of proving his dominance Brock Lesnar is probably the most legit badass we'll ever see in the WWE. He doesn't have a damn thing to prove to anyone, and we all know that. Oh, At this Doug, point, we're his not like was, this. <laughs> eh, no one's worthy of stepping in the ring with me. So Heyman went, yo, anyone who wants Brock, you have him at the Rumble. And you're going, huh? What? What? 
And then Heyman decides to up the ante. He says that he's going to go in at one. And you're thinking, like, what are they trying to do here? Anyways, Brock came out at number one. And at number two was Elias. He came out singing his little song <laughs> calling Lesnar a gorilla and Heyman a zookeeper. Lesnar rushed out like an uncaged animal, bringing <laughs> Elias in and beating the hell out of him like the seven-year-olds do to me in Fall Guys. He beat the yeah, crap who out wants of to walk with Elias straight to the back? Number two was Eric Rowan when he was coming out with what would eventually be revealed to be a toy spider. He lasted eight seconds, which is eight Crunch. seconds more than all of us wrestling fans can last. Wait, what? Bobby Roode, go be glorious somewhere else. John Morrison, yeah, this ain't no make-believe because you're gone. And Lesnar is holding the ring like an absolute mm-hmm. god. He's ran through the mid-card with ease. But at number six, the storytelling of this match really started to take off. See, that title around Lesnar's waist belonged to Kofi Kingston just a few months ago. And a few months back, in just seven seconds... Oh, man. Ah, oh, man. Don't remind me. Don't remind me of that 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 horrible time. Brock had ended his first championship reign, and Kofi never got his rematch. Fans wanted it. Kofi never got it. Well, he lasted a lot longer in this match than he did the one on SmackDown, and perfectly enough, at number seven, out came Rey Mysterio, who just two months ago had faced Brock Lesnar mm-hmm. at Survivor Series. Brock had taken out Rey's son, Dominic. Maybe for the better, because Rey just gets bullied by Dom nowadays. I swear, Rey <laughs> has to be the worst dad in wrestling history. How do you let this happen? This happened, and this happened. Facts. Just go back to your old strategy, man. So two guys with a score to settle with Lesnar were in the ring, and for mm-hmm. the first time in the match, it wasn't just easy work for Lesnar. These guys had a bone to pick with him, and they chipped away at him. When Big E arrived, there was a fantastic sequence where mm-hmm. all three of them came from the outside of the ring to take on Lesnar, and it was so adrenaline-fueled and fast-paced. This so- was fun. The, the way they set, they structured this Royal Rumble, this was fun. This was really good. In Paradise, big ending, 619. Three this finishers was fun. to Lesnar that are rushing him. But, yeah, light work, no problem. Lesnar <laughs> channeled his inner Super Cena and dropped yep. him like a bad habit. Ray, <laughs> sayonara, Big E, take a big L. And Kofi, sorry, bud, maybe next time. Back to square one with Lesnar holding court, having eliminated seven men. Cesaro over before it even begins. And what I like about this match is they had that adrenaline-fueled sequence, and now they cooled it down a bit with the next few. Shelton Benjamin up next, the two buddies from the U of Minnesota mm-hmm. and OVW. Brock's all happy, they're hugging, it looks like they're friends. But Brock doesn't have any friends. He dumps him the hell out. Shinsuke Nakamura gets all of, what, 14 seconds. He's dumped out. And at number 12, we got our first return of the Rumble. Montel Vontavious Porter. (laughs) He was back. And I don't know about you guys, but I loved MVP growing up because he's just so cool. What's crazy is this was supposed to be his second last match ever because he was going to come back and work as a producer. Thankfully, he and Lashley clicked and he Mm -hmm. made Lashley into an absolute menace. But the real menace in this match was Brock Lesnar. Took out MVP. Lesnar was just dominating, running through everyone. Like, this was 2K set to easy with the (laughs) sliders all the way down. And number 13 was the NXT North American champion, Keith Lee. Now, keep in mind... This was good. This was good. This was very, very good. It was like, oh, I wasn't expecting this. It got the crowd very hyped for this, man. Survivor Series 2019, Keith Lee had made it into the final with Roman Reigns, and there was a lot of talk that WWE saw big things for him, because obviously just look at the guy, he just felt like a huge deal. Even Lesnar couldn't help but smile and say that's a big boy when Lee got into the ring. This felt huge. This nah, felt like two giants were going to come to blows, and what's weird is Lee didn't even have much of a history in the WWE, and he still felt like a big deal. I remember watching this like, man, if he somehow gets him over the top rope, Keith Lee is a made man. He's ready. Who knows where he could go after this lee got in some offense and even took down lesnar with relative ease and the crowd went wild because Mm -hmm. at this time it kind of started to seep in that is lesnar just gonna bulldoze everyone and win is this gonna be a dud of a rumble braun Strowman was next and the massive humanity in the ring can only spell disaster did his little choo-choo train thing on keith lee but they decided to take on each other rather than eliminating the biggest threat in the match the guy that had been in there from the start these two idiots go after each other and they're <laughs> yep. both eliminated. At this point, Lesnar is on his own and you can tell that he's gone through the Giants, he's gone through the smaller guys, enemies of the past, he's gone through friends and he's getting tired. Quickly getting back to Lee, it's a shame that things never materialized for him. This is one of the biggest fumbles in WWE history. For Everything sure. was going his way. I don't know how they didn't at least make him a mid-card champion because 
obviously Vince is the most psychotic and crazy man in wrestling. As you can see on your screen, their stare down was a whole ass scene, man. You just felt like when Lee got up to the main roster, he was going to be something, but it never happened. Mm -mm. At number 15, Ricochet, maybe the easiest opponent so far in Lesnar's eyes because he destroyed him at Super Showdown in literal yeah. minutes and low blowed him earlier in the week on Raw. Mm -hmm. Well, he gets in there. He just keeps fighting until number 16, which is Drew McIntyre, the same number he came out the previous year. He stared a hole through Brock Lesnar all the way and from the... then this is what JR would say business began to pick up. Ah, such a great moment for Drew, bro. Top of the ramp to when he got in the ring. When Drew gets in the ring, the gloves come off for Lesnar. He slowly backs up into Ricochet, who hit a low blow, mm -hmm. got his revenge. Drew McIntyre <laughs> hits a Claymore to kick Lesnar <laughs> over the top rope and eliminate him from the match. I don't care the what nobody says. I, I popped so crazy for that moment. That was such a great moment. Oh, that was such a great moment for Drew. Oh, my God, that was so good. Crowd goes absolutely berserk. They went mental, and WWE made Drew right here. Yep. This was so well executed. No one could get through Lesnar, but Drew McIntyre and Drew McIntyre's Claymore was the only that was thing it. that could beat him. So it was done. This was, this was the moment. This was the moment I was like, oh, yeah, this is it for him. This is the moment. And from that, when he, once he won it, the, it was just the hype. The, the the intensity every week when he came out, you knew he got to be the guy to take it the title off for a moment, and no one complained. We knew it was probably going to be Lesnar versus McIntyre at Mania in yeah. some way or another. Now the question was where to next? The first half of this Rumble was perfect. It was fantastic storytelling. It was all about who could topple the WWE champion who was simply in there because he knew that no one could beat him. He ran through everyone no problem. They weaved in ghosts and opponents of Lesnar's past with Ray and Kofi. The Shelton reunion, they gave a moment to an up-and-coming star, also teasing us that Brock may go the distance. And fans were shocked and relieved when it took just one move, one single move, for McIntyre to get him out of the ring. Lesnar sold the Claymore like death. I don't mm -hmm. want to ever hear about Lesnar being lazy again. This dude made Drew in seconds. Drew eliminated Ricochet and continued to stare lasers into Bork Laser as Brock just continues to lay there. Bork laser. So tired from <laughs> Bro, lasting Bork. so long. Miz comes out. Miz eats a Claymore. He's gone. Lesnar finally stirring after 13 eliminations and he leaves. 13 eliminations straight at that too. Drew just kept staring at him like, yeah, motherfucker, I'm the reason you're gone. I'm the one who took you out when no one else could. Now he was holding the ring like Brock was. I remember mm -hmm. watching this and thinking Brock's going to come back and take him out. There's no way Way that it just ends like this it can't be that simple with the wwe aj styles comes in and now this is a new match this rumble was quite literally one of two halves the lesnar half and then everything post lesnar mm -hmm. and he thought the first half was entertaining just you wait ziggler at 19 carl anderson at 20 it's calm in the ring you know your standard royal rumble they're trying to dump each other over the top rope which is literally the concept of the match but the entire wrestling world turned on its head with the entrance of number 21 the buzzer hits. You think you know me? Oh. Uh, I tell you I went wild. Uh, I quite literally uh, I get goosebumps just thinking about it, bro. Once you heard you think you know me, crowd went fucking berserk. And the dirt sheets and it was all over social media. People knew Edge was gonna be there. They just didn't know when he was gonna come out. And oh, this was great. He lost my mind. It was late on a Sunday. I thought I ate something I wasn't supposed to. The legend himself, Edge, so was back all, in the WWE. Oh my How? God. How? We never thought we'd see him wrestle ever again. Edge was back. Edge was back. I just kept saying to myself, even saying it now, it's surreal. Mm -hmm. The rated R superstar Edge was back. This was the guy who was forced to retire in 2011 because mm -hmm. he told us that one more wrong blow to the neck and he could end up paralyzed in a wheelchair. But here he was live and in living color hitting spears that looked better than his first run. Mm -hmm. 40,000 at Minute Maid Park and millions across the world just losing their ever loving mind. This blew up social media. This reduced grown men to tears. Iconic. This moment this was, was great. surprising. Goosebumps, chills. 
tears, every emotion under the sun, and it was this pure insanity. This is so insanity. good. I'm you getting goosebumps now. You can tell from the moment came out how much it meant to the man behind Edge. Adam Copeland wanted closure on his career, and after having it ripped away from him out of nowhere, he was home doing what he loved. Ten years ago, he came back and won the 2010 Royal Rumble, and here he is again. The question now was, could he do it? Yeah, there were some reports. I don't think a lot of us actually thought it would happen. But what a moment. You'll remember where you were when the streak mm -hmm. died. Well, you'll probably also remember where you were when Edge's career was resurrected. Anyways, after we had our jaws dropped and we just couldn't compute anything, he was <laughs> on Ziggler, which, by the way, the cameraman missed, faced off with AJ Styles. And this was another moment that we never thought we'd see mm -hmm. until, you know, 2022, where they had a pretty disappointing feud, it's safe to say. AJ injured his shoulder after a spear from Edge and was abruptly eliminated. Corbin came in, Riddle followed, followed by Luke Gallows, because clearly something was supposed to happen with the club, but at this point, AJ was already gone, and we're left with five entrants still to come. Drew took out Corbin, and at number 25, it was mm. the Viper. Came down, and we had a rated RKO reunion, mm -hmm. and I know all you Ruthless Aggression kids may have felt it. There was so much nostalgia at this point. A callback to the 07 Royal Rumble. At 26 was the Big Dog back to feast for the second time in the night and going in this was the guy that all the rumors and reports were talking about that reigns is gonna win top guy who was in a pretty odd storyline at the time i guess it did make sense he took out ziggler who by the way went face to face with mcintyre earlier continuing all the threads in this match because ziggler was the one who brought drew back up to the main roster and now we're nearing the home stretch of what's been one of the best storytelling matches ever kevin owens at 27 alistair black 28 and samoa joe at 29 I'd like to once again bring up that Samoa Joe not being WWE champion is a criminal sin by Vince and company. Facts. Joe and Owens had beef with Rollins, who was the final entrant in this match, and so our field of competitors was complete. At this time, he was morphing from Burn It Down Rollins to Messiah Rollins. Mm -hmm. You know what's so weird is 10 years previous, we had a guy who would hold sermons in CM Punk. Well, here was Rollins. 10 years previous, Edge returned in that same rumble where Punk was holding sermons. I guess the more things change, the more they stay the same. KO and Joe facts, went under facts, the bottom facts. rope and a brawl broke out between all of them and Rollins' goons ran wild, brother, brother. Black sent out. Owens almost gets Rollins out, but this year the false elimination spot went to him instead of Kofi. Owens sent packing. Joe joining him on the trip, and now we're down to five. Rollins, Reigns, McIntyre, Orton, and Edge. And you know that storytelling I talked about? Well, of course it continued. Everyone ganged up on Rollins, mm -hmm. who had created absolute chaos in the match. At one point, circling back to the man he stabbed back in 2014. Yep. <laughs> also in that same year, he used Edge as a way to get the authority back on Raw and tried to paralyze him. Well, Edge finally got his hands on Rollins. Now, this was good. Very good callbacks to previous situations this was a fun raw uh he for, literally a fun wasn't rumble. allowed to a fun Drew to claim more seth's gone and it's down to the final four at this point i just had a feeling that this has to end with edge and roman spear versus spear they're gonna tease us that brock's about to come out and just murder drew super cena 2014 style that didn't happen though mm -mm. edge and orton reunite but orton being the slippery viper he is tries to take out edge edge sees it takes out his former tag team partner and we are down to three. Edge and Roman have a mini sequence, which leads them both to the edge of the apron, where Roman barely eliminates Edge by swiping his fingers off the rope, and he mm -hmm. falls to the floor. And out goes all the hopes of the Edgeheads. Man, just seeing him back in this match was honestly unreal. Thankfully, this wasn't just going to be a one-night thing. Edge was here to stay. Now, we're down to two. And okay, nice, Drew, you had your moment. You kicked yeah, out Lesnar. A lot of Time people felt that way. to clean things up, point at the sign, and send everyone home happy. Maybe happy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. If I were to tell you that, I'd be lying. These guys have a quick sequence. Reigns hits a Superman punch, and he tried to dump Drew over the top rope. Drew avoids it. Reigns hits the rope for a spear, and Drew catches him into a brutal claymore. And at this moment, his heart was probably racing the adrenaline was in everyone's veins. Mm -hmm. He dumped him over the top rope. And Drew McIntyre was oh, your 2020 Royal Rumble so winner. Good. Not only did he slay the beast, but he went the distance. I talked about how much things meant to Edge. Look at Drew. This guy was supposed to be the one. He was mm -hmm. supposed to be a top star, but he was fired. 
now he got the Royal Rumble win and he was back on his redemption arc. Mm -hmm. Man, what a match. The storytelling, the order of the entrance, the pacing, even the cooldown periods, the tie-ins with Lesnar, nods to the past, reunions, new guys, old superstars, even that last little bit with Reigns and Drew, you could say it was the former chosen one against the current chosen one. Mm -hmm. The highs were so high and this match barely had any lows, if any at all. When that bell rang, you couldn't help but smile because you knew that you would just witness something special. It was mm. magical. It was what we Take all back, love about man. wrestling. Bef that anything can happen at without the the COVID stuff afterwards. <laughs> this this was such a such a good moment, man. I I hope Drew can get back to that that spot again where he can get one more WrestleMania moment because he de he definitely deserved a WrestleMania moment. I, that's all. That's the one thing I will say about Drew. He he deserves that that crowning moment of becoming the champ. He didn't, at any he didn't given get, moment, a thrill well, ride unlike... He didn't get it with fans being there. Like any other. This Royal Rumble wasn't one of these shows where every single match on the card was insane. But because of the elite storytelling in the final match, the return of Edge coupled with Drew's win, it's one that's never going to be forgotten. Mm -mm. The MVPs of this match were obviously Brock Lesnar, Edge, and Drew McIntyre. And coming out of the show, there were so many questions. It looked like we were about to get one of the most stacked WrestleManias in a long time. Cena came back a few weeks later, so we were going to have him, Edge, Randy, Lesnar, Drew, Roman, Goldberg, Undertaker. It was going to be so stacked. But we just can't have nice things. COVID came in like... Mm -hmm. No way! <laughs> Edge's first solo match was yeah. in front of no one. A mania which felt like it was going to be one of the best felt so empty because it, it was. was yeah. But I can't help but feel for Drew McIntyre. The dude rebuilt himself from the ground up. And yeah, he beat Lesnar at Mania. But, but this should have been same. in front of 70,000 screaming mm. fans. The dude still hasn't gotten his moment. This rumble was just so fun. It was the good, great, <clears throat> and the beautiful of being a fan of the WWE. It was simply magic. You were into the story at the end. You had a return that you never ever thought you would see seriously after this match i remember just searching for hours what a triple fusion was and what was gonna happen if edge somehow took a wrong bump the match was just so mm -hmm. excellently executed that you could watch it anytime and not get tired of it so i just wanted to make a quick one talk about this match the royal rumbles coming up i wasn't running this channel at the time so i never got to yeah no nah, this was a great video I'm gonna go ahead and give it a like and hey, you guys should as well the link to the original video will be down below so if you haven't subscribed to super kick studios definitely check them out he has some dope videos that are worth your time man but this was this was a good one man it brought me back down memory lane that was a very special royal rumble it, it made it even more made it even more special for me because it was in my home city um but uh, unfortunately it just was in a year of covid man and a lot of a lot of unfortunate things happened that year especially for us wrestling fans but this was still and uh it's, it's a still a top tier royal rumble so comment down below let me know did you guys enjoy this royal rumble match uh, the, the 2020 Royal Rumble uh, men's match. Did you guys enjoy it as much as I did as, and, and as much as uh, many others have? Because I definitely did. I thought this was fun. I thought this was good. And the right person won. And how did you guys feel when Edge, when you heard the, you think you know me? When you heard that, how did you guys initially react? Because I know I definitely popped crazy. The rumors were, were circling, but I had to see it with my own eyes. And when I heard his music, oh, uh, such a great moment man so uh i appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel i am still getting the speed of youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace